When Cecil Rhodes colonialized what is now modern Zimbabwe, he stripped land rights from the natives for his own mining interests. Now, Mugabe used this past injustice to legitimize his own land grab program. Um, and now we've recently seen him using these same steps against white commercial farmers who support the MDC. What are your thoughts on the manner in which Mugabe's program was implemented? And what, if any, property rights do Zimbabweans have? The contradiction is there that, uh, you know, once you have a constitution in place that upholds property rights, which is what, 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 what was in place after the Lakin Star Wars conference, it is then very difficult to, to see how we can implement and apply expropriation as a solution to, uh, to, to, to correct past injustices. Because you have, you have a certain moral, okay, there's still that moral obligation to ensure that uh, a, a past injustices are, are rectified. But now you need to think about the methodology, because methodology here is very, very critical. By expropriating, killing, and you know, uh, kidnapping, I don't think it's the right methodology. In fact, MDC have a, a sort of a, a, a policy or an ideological, you know, dilemma here because politically speaking, it is very difficult for a party to win by saying we want to reverse all the bad land policies that were put in place. Because some people argue that, that the status quo cannot be reverted to. But we, we have been discussing about this, uh, you know, and uh, we tend, tend to come to an agreement that uh, the best thing that we can do, first of all, we need to enshrine the supremacy of property rights in the Constitution. And once we do that, uh, reparations and redress are a critical element uh, of, uh, of, of, re of rediscovering our human essence. Those individuals that have, that have title deeds, that have a title to their property, we must give them alternatives. If they want go to go back to their land, the person who was given their land has to prove to us that he is capable. It is, this is business. Agriculture is business. Mugabe lost, lost the, the, the plot. Agriculture is business. And you want to treat it like business. If you, if you have been given, given a business to do and you are, you are failing, you, can, you, are, you, 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 you must be allowed to be, you can be dispossessed. Because after all, it's not your, your property. So really, theoretically, I think uh, readdressing the situation, uh, you know, as it stands now, it's, it might be a bit difficult because uh, uh, there might not necessarily be enough funding to, to support the parish. South African leader Mbeki recently headed up opposition at the United Nations Security Council against the Zimbabwean arms embargo. His argument that the UN Charter prohibits the UN from intervening in UN member states' domestic, uh, domestic affairs seems like an echo from the past, as the apartheid South African government had used similar reasoning before. Now, such action as a far cry from what Nelson Mandela declared South Africa to be a defender of issues of human rights and a promoter of democracy worldwide. Now, what do you think of all the inaction on behalf of the African Union, and particularly South Africa? And do you think Mbeke might be acting this way because of his own perceived economic interests in Zimbabwean refugees coming over the border for economic opportunity, or even perhaps because of uh, his old friendship with Robert Mugabe. The assertion that uh, what Mbeki says is that uh, it is not right for uh, foreign countries to interfere and intervene in a, in a, in a sovereign state where there is a political crisis is, uh, is really a, a, a paradox, a fallacy in the sense that even during the fight for, for liberation, the anti-apartheid movement was driven mostly from outside the country. The, the ANC, uh, you know, and, and the other liberators were based in Zambia, in Tanzania, and, and, and Zimbabwe. So eventually, in one way or another, there must be some kind of, uh, you know, uh, participation or intervention. It's not necessarily uh, in, in a military format. Right. So, so the point really is that, uh, you know, our, our, our methodology of intervention is that if there is a peacekeeping force, right, that is given uh, the necessary resources to participate in, in, in neutralizing Mugabe's military system. That should be acceptable. Which is what Meg is saying, you know, it can't happen. We don't know why he's saying that, because as long as Mugabe has got access to apply a scorched earth policy on the citizens of Zimbabwe, 
who are defenseless, whatever negotiations they is, is, is doing are, 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 are meaningless because meanwhile the villagers and the peasants are, are, are being killed and abducted and murdered. So I believe that Mbegi is one of these pseudo pan Africanists who, who are in a state of denial. Mm -hmm. We don't accept that uh, there is nothing called an African solution. There is a global solution. So if he accepts that, then you understand that any intervention, either from the United Nations or AU or uh, Southern African community, is as legitimate as legitimate as, as it was in South Africa, where there was apartheid. Now that we're talking about intervention, we look at all the past human rights violations under Mugabe, like Gukurundi, to the rampant violence and torture against political opposition, opposition members. And we've got to ask ourselves, what can actually be done to protect Zimbabwean citizens and ensure the proper transfer of power um, should and could the uh, Zimbabwean citizenry arm itself out of defense or should foreign forces be deployed to stop this injustice? And if so, what countries would be appropriate? Would it be U.S. troops, uh, U.N. troops, African troops? What are your thoughts? Yeah, because the issue of military intervention generally tends to step on, 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 on the toes of nationalism and sovereignty. Right. And MDC and everybody else in the opposition is aware of that, right? But the argument here is that uh, because Mugabe has so much dominance and control over the military system in Zimbabwe, even in a period where there is a transitional arrangement, it is impossible to see how Mugabe may, be, uh, may, be, may not be tempted to abuse the, the military mechanisms that are in place, because they are his. So the only sensible thing, what we Democrats are saying is that we don't even see how we can avoid having some kind of peacekeeping force in Zimbabwe. That force can, although it may be financed by the EU or by the, uh, by the State Department or by anybody, it is African in the sense that these are Africans from Nigeria, from Zambia, from Mozambique, from Botswana, who are keeping the force because we don't trust Mugabe, you, you can't trust him. We, 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 he's got too much control over the military. So really, it's, I think we're still within our, 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 our right to demand a neutral military intervention force that, that represents the, the, African, uh, the African dream. Rejoice, I have to ask you. You seem like a very optimistic man. Now, where do you see Zimbabwe 10 years from now? And is there a stability, an opportunity for true reform quick reform, the needed reform, in time for your country. I have no problem with that because all I need to do is what was Zimbabwe in 1980. Those targets of supremacy, of economic supremacy, the, the, the exciting tourism industry, the, the freedom, you know, the, the high quality of education, the functional infrastructure, we don't need to reinvent the world here. We simply need to go back into history and say what were we like in 1980. That is, a, that is a good start. What I, what I can see now is a, 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 an environment where there is absolute freedom, where the free market is reigning supreme, where the government is doing the business of governance instead of trying to, to run the, the, the economy, where there is separation of powers, where there is a constitution that everybody else likes, where, where, they, where, where there is a, you know, individual liberties can be expressed, freedom of expression, an independent media, all these very basic terms of democracy that are missing in Zimbabwe, the institutions of democracy and governance that have been contaminated and, and adulterated and poisoned by ZANU-PF, we want to reverse that all the regulations that are, that, are, that are negative. I think in five, year, five years from now, that's the Zimbabwe that I want to see. Mr. Nguenya, it is the passionate actions of individuals like yourself who stand up against such tyranny that we Americans can't even fathom in our blessed country of liberty and freedom. And we thank you for your time, and we thank you for your service, and we see the atrocities, we see the injustice that's occurring every day on the news, and we hope you can just spread the message of liberty and spread the message of freedom and stop the tyranny that is occurring at your home.